Ulla Loom. The skies, they were ashen and sober. The leaves, they were crisped and sere. The leaves, they were withering and sere. It was night in the lonesome October of my most immemorial year. It was hard by the dim lake of Orba in the misty mid-region of Weir. It was down by the dark tarn of Orba in the ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. Here once, through an alley titanic of Cyprus, I roamed with my soul of Cyprus with Psyche, my soul. These were days when my heart was volcanic as the scoriac rivers that roll, as the lavas that restlessly roll their sulphurous currents down Yenik in the ultimate climes of the pole, that groan as they roll down Mount Yenik in the realms of the boreal pole. Our talk had been serious and sober, but our thoughts, they were palsied and sear. Our memories were treacherous and sear, for we knew not the month was October, and we marked not the night of the year. Our night of all nights in the year. We noted not the dim lake of Orba, though once we had journeyed down here, remembered not the dank tarn of Orba, nor the ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. And now, as the night was senescent, and star-dials pointed to morn, as the sun-dials hinted of morn, at the end of our path a liquescent and nebulous luster was born, out of which a miraculous crescent arose with a duplicate horn. Astartes bediamonded crescent, distinct with its duplicate horn. And I said, She is warmer than Diane. She rolls through an ether of sighs. She revels in a region of sighs. She has seen that the tears are not dry on these cheeks, where the worm never dies, and has come past the stars of the lion to point us the path to the skies, to the Lithian peace of the skies. Come up in despite of the lion to shine on us with her bright eyes. Come up through the lair of the lion with love in her luminous eyes. But Psyche, uplifting her finger, said, Sadly, this star I mistrust, her pallor I strangely mistrust. O oh, hasten, O oh, let us not linger, O oh, fly, let us fly, for we must. In terror she spoke, letting sink her wings, till they trailed in the dust. In agony sobbed, letting sink her plumes, till they trailed in the dust, till they sorrowfully trailed in the dust. I replied, this is nothing but dreaming. Let us on by this tremulous light. Let us bathe in this crystalline light. Its sibyllic splendor is beaming with hope and in beauty tonight. See, 
It flickers up the sky through the night. Ah, we safely may trust to its gleaming and be sure it will lead us aright. We safely may trust to a gleaming that cannot but guide us aright since it flickers up to heaven through the night. Thus I pacified Psyche and kissed her and tempted her out of her gloom and conquered her scruples and gloom and we passed to the end of a vista but were stopped by the door of a tomb, by the door of a legended tomb. And I said, What is written, sweet sister, on the door of this legended tomb? She replied, Ulla loom, Ulla loom, tis the vault of thy lost Ulla loom. Then my heart it grew ashen and sober as the leaves that were crisped and sere, as the leaves that were withering and sere. And I cried, it was surely October on this very night of last year that I journeyed, I journeyed down here, that I brought a dread burden down here on this night of all nights in the year, ah, what demon has tempted me here? Well, I know now this dim lake of Orba, this misty mid-region of Weir. Well, I know now this dank tarn of Orba, this ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. Annabel Lee It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child, and she was a child, in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee so that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee, and the stars never rise, but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling. 
my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. A dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep, while I weep. O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? The City in the Sea Lo, death has reared himself a throne in a strange city, lying alone far down within the dim west, where the good and the bad and the worst and the best have gone to their eternal rest. There shrines and palaces and towers, time-eaten towers, and tremble not, resemble nothing that is ours. Around, by lifting winds, forgot resignedly beneath the sky, the melancholy waters lie. No rays from the holy heaven come down on the long night-time of that town, but light from out the lurid sea streams up the turrets silently, gleams up the pinnacles far and free, up domes, up spires, up kingly halls, up fanes, up Babylon like walls, up shadowy, long forgotten bowers of sculptured ivy and stone flowers, up many and many a marvellous shrine whose wreathed friezes intertwine the vile the violet and the vine. Resignedly beneath the sky the melancholy waters lie, so blend the turrets and shadows there that all seem pendulous in air, while from a proud tower in the town, death looks gigantically down. There open fanes and gaping graves yawn level with the luminous waves, but not the riches there that lie in each idol's diamond eye, not the gaily jewelled dead tempt the waters from their bed. For no ripples curl, alas, along that wilderness of glass, 
no swellings tell that winds may be upon some far-off happier sea. No heavings hint that winds have been on seas less hideously serene. But lo, a stir is in the air, the wave, there is a movement there, as if the towers had thrust aside in slightly sinking the dull tide, as if their tops had feebly given a void within the filmy heaven. The waves have now a redder glow, the hours are breathing faint and low, and when amid no earthly moans down, down that town shall settle hence, hell rising from a thousand thrones shall do it reverence. The Sleeper At midnight in the month of June I stand beneath the mystic moon An opiate vapour, dewy, dim Exhales from out her golden rim And softly dripping, drop by drop Upon the quiet mountain top steals drowsily and musically into the universal valley. The rosemary nods upon the grave, the lily lolls upon the wave, wrapping the fog about its breast, the ruin moulders into rest. Looking like Lethe, see the lake a conscious slumber seems to take, and would not, for the world, awake. All beauty sleeps, and lo, where lies her casement open to the skies, Irene, with her destinies. O oh, lady bright, can it be right this window open to the night, the wanton airs from the treetop laughingly through the lattice drop, the bodiless airs a wizard rout flit through thy chamber in and out, and wave the curtain canopy so fitfully, so fearfully, above the closed and fringed lid neath which thy slumbering soul lies hid, that o'er the floor and down the wall, like ghosts, the shadows rise and fall. O lady dear, hast thou no fear? Why and what art thou dreaming here? Sure thou art come o'er far-off seas, A wonder to these garden trees. Strange is thy pallor, strange thy dress, Strange above all thy length of tress, And this all-solemn silentness. The lady sleeps. O oh, may her sleep, which is enduring, so be deep. Heaven have her in its sacred keep. This chamber changed for one more holy, This bed for one more melancholy, I pray to God that she may lie forever With unopened eye, while the dim-sheeted ghosts Go by. My love, she sleeps. Oh, may her sleep, as it is lasting, so be deep. Soft may the worms 
about her creep. Far in the forest, dim and old, for her may some tall vault unfold, some vault that oft hath flung its black and winged panels fluttering back, triumphant o'er the crested palls of her grand family funerals, some sepulchre remote, alone, against whose portal she hath thrown in childhood many an idle stone, some tomb from out whose sounding door she ne'er shall force an echo more, thrilling to think, poor child of sin, it was the dead who groaned within. To one in paradise. Thou wast that all to me, love, for which my soul did pine, a green isle in the sea, love, a fountain and a shrine, all wreathed with fairy fruits and flowers, and all the flowers were mine. Ah, dream too bright to last, ah, starry hope that didst arise but to be overcast. A voice from out the future cries, On, on, but o'er the past, dim gulf, my spirit hovering lies, mute, motionless, aghast. For alas, alas, with me the light of life is o'er, no more, no more, no more, such language holds the solemn sea to the sands upon the shore, shall bloom the thunder-blasted tree, or the stricken eagle soar, and all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy dark eye glances, and where thy footstep gleams, in what ethereal dances, by what eternal streams. Alas, for that accursed time they bore thee o'er the billow, from love to titled age and crime, and an unholy pillow. From me, and from our misty clime, where weeps the silver willow. The Haunted Palace In the greenest of our valleys, by good angels tenanted, once a fair and stately palace, radiant palace, reared its head. In the monarch thought's dominion, it stood there. Never seraph spread a pinion over fabric half so fair. Banners, yellow, glorious, golden, on its roof did float and flow. This, all this, was in the olden time long ago. And every gentle air that dallied in that sweet day, Along the ramparts plumed and pallid, A winged odour went away. Wanderers in that happy valley, Through two luminous windows, Saw spirits moving musically To a lute's well-tuned law, Bound about a throne where, sitting Porphyrogene, in state his glory well befitting, the ruler of the realm was seen. And all with pearl and ruby glowing was the fair palace door, 
through which came flowing, 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 and sparkling evermore a troop of echoes, whose sweet duty was but to sing in voices of surpassing beauty the wit and wisdom of their king. But evil things, in robes of sorrow, assailed the monarch's high estate. Ah, let us mourn, for never morrow shall dawn upon him desolate. And round about his home the glory that blushed and bloomed is but a dim remembered story of the old time entombed. And travellers now within that valley, through the red litten windows, see vast forms that move fantastically to a discordant melody, while, like a ghastly rapid river, through the pale door a hideous throng rush out forever and laugh but smile no more.